paper. I love it. The sparkles in it. I'm gonna keep the bag. Kevin, you did. She shouldn't have. You know that we want to do this for you. Wow. Whoa, we clap. It's beautiful. Friends, we have come together in the presence of God to witness the marriage of Kevin Cox and Jennifer Elvidge and to rejoice with them. Marriage is a gift of God and a means of His grace in which man and woman become one flesh. It is God's purpose that as husband and wife give themselves to each other in love, they shall grow together and be united in that love. Kevin and Jennifer if either, either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. Kevin and Jennifer have come to enter this holy state. They have complied with civil and canon law and have been duly prepared to enter into marriage. They will each give their consent to the other. We love each other because he first loved us. Your beloved does not need your achievements but needs your uncomplicated soul. It is good to work for change, but always return to what is. If you accept all things, whether painful or joyful, you will always know that you belong to each other. Love is less always than to win, less never than alive, less bigger than the least begin, less littler than forgive. It is most sane and sunly, and more it cannot die than all the sky, which only is higher than the sky. And now I address the families of the couple. The answer to this is we do. <laughs> <laughs> do you, the members of the families of Kevin and Jen, give your blessing to this marriage? We do. I, Kevin, take you, Jen. I, Kevin, take you, Jen. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For the rest of our lives. For the rest of our lives. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Jen? Mm -hmm. I, Jen, take you, Kevin, to be my husband. I, Jen, take you, Kevin, to be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For the rest of our lives. For the rest of our lives. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Jen, I give you this ring. Jen, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a, as a symbol of my vow. With all that I am and all that I have. With all that I am and all that I have. I honor you in the name of God. I honor you in the name of God. Kevin, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow. With all that I am and all that I have. With all that I am and all that I have. I honor you in the name of God. I honor you in the name of God. 
Kevin and Jen have joined themselves to each other by solemn vows signified by the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of a ring. I declare that they are husband and wife. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, those whom God hath joined together, let no one put asunder. Can I kiss her? I'll oh, take the word first. <laughs> Used a million times in verse and rhyme, yet they never reach everyone's ears. Three well worn words, soaked by the rain, well worn words full of joy and pain. So I decided to go first because, of all the things Kevin is, short and to the point is not one of them. <laughs> As of today, you, Kevin Gordon Cox, have asked me to marry you no less than 15 times. <laughs> and to be clear, I have never said no. <laughs> I spent some time looking through our many text messages in order to write this, and I discovered three things. You are a giant nerd. <laughs> you seem to like me quite a lot. Smitten, one might say. <laughs> And you seem to have an interest in this thing called the Triumph Bonneville. <laughs> I'm not totally sure what that's about. <laughs> you once said to me, I hope you know how much I love you. And I could never doubt it. The new me knows that I am beautiful and strong like the ocean. I'm strong on my own. Your love is like the sun shining on the waves. It makes the ocean brighter and more breathtaking than it could ever be alone. I promise to elvage size our life <laughs> at every opportunity <laughs> and listen when you tell me we need to take a break. I promise to push you out of your comfort zone so that you can see how truly amazing you are. Deciding to take your hand and walk across the street was the best decision I've ever made. I love you. Thank you for being the best man a girl could ever dream for. There is no language in our lungs to tell the world what's in our hearts. That's a quote from a band you would hate. <laughs> you actually told me you hate them. <laughs> we all have a private world inside us. Wittgenstein called it our beetle box. And greater minds, uh, greater talents than mine have struggled to express what is in that box. So where can I begin? I would get my students to identify their intended audience. To whom do I speak? <laughs> you, obviously, but this is a public declaration, so there are more people to consider. We have gathered here our families, yours and mine, and our friends, yours and mine. What could all these people hope to hear? We both know that's a bad place to start. What we are doing here today comes from someplace deeper than making other people happy. Applying the pedagogical principles of backwards design. <laughs> it's for the teachers in the audience. <laughs> what is it that I would like them to learn about me and about us? That I love you. So this, my brilliant, amazing lover, is what I hear. You tell me that I am not people. And I know exactly what you mean. You declare, what difference does it make? And I know exactly what you mean. You tell me that our relationship has a simple certainty that is both bizarre and wonderful, and I know exactly what you mean. The trick of meaning isn't about choosing the right words. The words, our language, these noises, grunts, clicks and fricatives have never been up to the task of meaning anything at all on their own. There's a gap and there's a way across it. That's what the singer left out. That's what the philosopher can't abide. Meaning, like love, requires faith, and I am in awe of yours. You have filled my life with chaos, <laughs> the like of which I have never known, and I am better for it. We are one, but we are opposites. Sometimes I need a kick in the pants to get moving, 
but you sometimes need permission to slow down and catch your breath. Together we have made a safe place for both of us. You are calm in the face of chaos. You have faith that we will get through it. I am both honored and elevated by that faith. You always believe the best of me. And when I see myself through your eyes, I'm humbled by the man I can be. Jen, there is nothing I've ever done or could ever do to deserve this love we share together. Luckily for me, love is not about what is deserved. I am blessed to have it. I am blessed to give it. We have made promises today and I want to make another. It is nearly eight centuries old and translated from the Persian using both words and faith. Out, <clears throat> out beyond ideas of right and wrong, there is a field called love and I will meet you there. I invite you to stand. I present to you Kevin Cox and Jennifer Elvidge, husband and wife. <laughs> do I get to do this now? Sure. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> we bought a house. <laughs> we gotta go slow. Hello. Speech. Thanks. <laughs> so we just did that. We just did that. Kevin has nobly followed in his parents' footsteps as a as a teacher. You know, but, but Kevin has long been a natural educator. In grade six, we started to develop our, um, our passion for role-playing games. Get ready for the nerdness. <laughs> you know, RPGs really became our passion uh, in our misspent youth. I don't think it was really misspent. I think it actually kept us out of a lot of trouble. You know? It could have been a lot worse without these things in our, in our lives. Um, one game system was modeled after our uh, uh, favorite anime um, cartoon show called Robotech that we were big fans of. Now we're talking, now we're talking. So building my first character, you know, a, a 13, very helpful 13 year old Kevin, who was the, acting as the game master for this first experience of mine, you know, he you know, helpfully listed out all the possible skills that my character could choose from. And this, you know, is ranging from various forms of martial arts, uh, cooking, uh, sewing, there's all sorts of things. Um, maths and arts, and various tracks in computer technologies, um, which is kind of ironic because that's where my career is sort of headed. Um, so, you know, Kevin would say, oh, computer security. I was like, ooh, what, what's that? And he would provide some detailed answer. Uh, oh, okay, I'll take it. Computer uh, orgasms. <laughs> What's an orgasm? <laughs> that wasn't the last time I learned something from Kevin. <laughs> you know, although we haven't seen much of each other the last, you know, 20, 25 years, we've always made a point of, you know, getting together when, when we could. And uh, last summer we had the awesome fortune, Carrie and my kids and, and I, that these guys came over and hung out with us for almost a week on Prince Edward Island. It was awesome. It was fantastic. Um, and now, you know, we get to all be here and uh, enjoy and celebrate their love and loyalty for each other. So with that, I'd just like to say, Kevin, I love you. I couldn't be more happy for you. And Jen, you know, it's, it's not all bad. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Megan, and I'm Jen's cousin, and... I'm her little sister. 
sister. Um, when Jen asked me to stand with her um, as she married her new best friend, I was extremely honored. Um, we have never seen you this happy. Um, we haven't had a lot of time really together, um, and it's been fantastic being able to spend it with both of you and seeing her blossom, like just become great. She was the first one who I ever had a safe word with. Um, <laughs> when, I, when I first started dating, um, and she wanted to make sure that I was okay, so luckily, and I'm sure she's relieved, that she never received platypus as a message to make, that was our, like, if anything was wrong, I was to let her know platypus, and that was, I was not okay. Um, we were original partners in crime, which really meant that she forced me to go first, wherever we went, just to make sure things were okay. So even though she may have a new partner in crime, she will always be someone that I can look up to, who I can count on, who I, and who I can get in trouble with. Sarah and I were reminiscing about one particular sleepover together where we attempted to watch the movie Snatch at 3 a.m. Um, I don't know if, you ever, if you've ever seen Snatch, um, but every character has a very thick, rural, Irish accent. Um, well, we couldn't understand a single thing that they said that entire movie. Mr. Vassalier, concentrate. Um, so we decided to call it a night and try it again in the morning. Well, the morning rolled around and we still had no idea what was going on. Um, you know, because what? What happened in that movie? If someone could explain that to me later, that would be great. <laughs> or a particular Christmas morning where we were all opening presents and Harrison, my baby brother over there, he's 6'4", he's not a, really a baby anymore. Anyway, um, <laughs> he was maybe only like three, I want to say and very excited about Christmas, and rightly so, because the presents were piled as high as the tree. Um, so to try and calm him down, Jen offered words of wisdom. She said, okay, Harrison, repeat after me. Om. I am one with the cheese. And my baby brother dutifully repeated after her and said, Om. I am one with the cheese. <laughs> well, you know, and he's not wrong. He has <laughs> great affinity for cheese. Um. <laughs> you complement and mirror each other so perfectly. You keep each other grounded and you build each other up. Um, you're a perfect match to take on life's adventures together. My greatest wish for the two of you is that through the years, the love you have for each other will only deepen and grow, so that when you look back at this, your wedding day, it will be the day you love each other the least. Mm -hmm. Years before he could grow a beard, he would have an orange mustache from drinking Jolly Miller orange drink. Uh, and he did that because milk made him constipated. <laughs> <laughs> But he's not always fun and games. He got angry once playing Hungry Hungry Hippos because we gave him the broken one. <laughs> and it wouldn't eat the marbles. So he was so mad he used his first swear word at the age of three. He still uses that swear word today, but it started with the Hungry Hippos. <laughs> at age two or three, he lectured us that we should say feces because that's the educated word for poop. <laughs> always remember, he comes from a family that may not always like him, just ask our mother, but who love him very much. And that's it. What do you say at your children's weddings? Well, obviously, you want to wish them well. But I... Uh, I had an eye surgery about 10 days ago, so I had a lot of time to think about this. And I decided, no, you don't want to wish them well. That's boring. 
<laughs> and it's not inspiring. So I've decided to wish them for adventure and life experience so they can grow and bond and have memories that last a lifetime. Now, I don't necessarily mean danger. So what do I mean? Well, I mean, after a short time being married, you go down into the kitchen and your new wife is making pancakes in a brand new uh, blender and the flour is getting stuck to the side so she takes the lid off while it's running and sticks the spoon in. Well, it exploded on the ceiling, on her and everything. But those are the things you remember. I mean, biking to the Diablo River and shooting down the gentle rapids in a $29 Canadian Tire inflatable boat. We did that a lot. <laughs> so I think you get my drift. Jen and Kevin are on the right track, going on their, honey on their honeymoon in Newfoundland by mo motorcycle. Sheila and I wish you even more, but we wish you a life of adventure and memories that solidifies your bond. Here's to Jennifer and Kevin. Are we cutting? One, two, three, cut it. Oh my God, it's hard. You're gonna have to do the force for us. Just hack out a piece. We're good. Just like right there. Just that piece. Yeah, it's real tasty. Okay, I'm doing this one-handed with no support on the, okay, the base at all. I don't want to sound this cake flying. You ready? Don't fling it. I'm trying not to. Just pick it up. It's just going to my mouth. I'm not afraid of your cooties. Okay, so this? I'm just not anymore, no. Is that enough? Yeah, that's good. That'll <laughs> okay, Yeah. No, I bit it off. Oh. But also, your face. Delish. Smelly. Yeah. Who has the better shower singing voice? <laughs> you. <laughs> Who is more likely to make the bedroom floor their personal laundry basket? <laughs> Kids right away. What? Who wants what? kids right away? <laughs>
we're gonna do Ron and his daughter, Jen. Last dance ever with her buddy right here. This is the last one. <laughs> that came up to the stage and asked for it. <laughs>